Hello and welcome. If you're interested in hanging out with me today and checking out this really cute book called Yarn Cake Amigurumi, it has 15 cute crochet creatures to create, then I hope you stick around and enjoy this video. If you're new here, welcome. I am really grateful that you decided to hang out with me today and talk about yarn. This channel does focus on knitting and crochet, but if you are a only crocheter or only knitter, you are just as welcome, and I'm so happy to have you here. If you're returning, thank you so much, as always, for coming back and talking to me about yarn and about projects and what you're working on. I love to hear those things in the comments, so make sure you go ahead and drop one and let me know what is on your hooks or needles are both. So today, yes, we are going to be diving in to the Yarn Cake Emigurumi 15 Cute Creatures to Create, and I am really excited about this book. I picked this up on a little excursion with my husband. We went to Books A Million, and I've never seen this before, but I've always been a fan of ombre and gradient yarns. I love buying them, and I have quite a few of them. And while I love to make shawls with them, such as this, this is the Citron shawl that I noticed a few years ago, I really thought it was a really cute idea to incorporate these in some amigurumi because it is a great way to use those easy to grab gradients and ombres that we can find at big box stores and make some really cute creatures that are going to bring smiles to not only us, but if we choose to give them away, to whoever receives them. So that is what this video is going to focus on today. So the book does retail for $24.99 here in the USA and in the UK it is $14.99. From what I can tell this is a USA crafter because it says that she is a native of Las Vegas who moved to Washington State and started to be a stay-at-home mom and learned to crochet. So this will be in U.S. terminology. If you are new to crochet or new to reading patterns, that is very important to know when you are making amigurumi and you're starting out in really any kind of pattern in crochet because there is a difference between the U.S. terms and the European terms. And that's a whole nother video, but this one is all in the USA, so you don't have to worry about converting things. After a while though, you do just begin converting them in your head and you don't even think about it. So just know that, that comes with the more you make. So looking at this book, it is well made. I love the thickness of the cover and the pages are really nice. These are all the cute, adorable things that we are gonna be making in this love them. I love this guy so much. I love her yarn choices and the colorways and this is a real good breakdown of all 15 patterns. We see our materials page. We see stitches and techniques. Finish and touches on page 22. Abbreviations about the author. Acknowledgements and then the index. There's a welcome page and then we go straight into the materials and you can see that the yarns that she did use are the mandala ombre which is why i picked up this for use with this book she also talks about the yarn cakes about your crochet hooks and crochet thread she goes over plastic safety eyes and i love that she puts a warning label in here because safety eyes are used so often for children under three and they are not recommended for them at all. And she advises to embroider their eyes on rather than using them. She goes over stuffing and the different types, embroidery needles for sewing in those ends that we all love to do so much. Then we go over the stitches and techniques and you can see how she does that here. Very informative. I love that she goes over all of those. Even the magic green, pops, corn stitches, basically any kind of stitch you're going to need to know, including finishing touches with a whip stitch and the mattress stitch. I really love that she takes the time to go over that for you because this book is really great for someone who is also learning to start making their own Emma Magrumi and maybe unsure of the processes. There's our abbreviations page, which leads us straight into the designs. 
So I do want to show you how she has the pages set up in the actual book portion where all the patterns are. So each one of the 15 patterns that comes in this book, you're going to have a photo page, which I will show you all of them momentarily. And then it's going to have all the information about that pattern. So we have the name, for example, this is Bunty the Bunny. It has a little brief description about them. It has a skill level about them per pattern. Then it's going to have your finished size and it's going to have every bit of the material that is going to be required for you to complete this. That's including your stuffing, if you're going to need a pet brush or a brush to brush out the yarn, and even if you need any kind of eyes or anything like that. Then as you go in the pattern, it's broken down by section. So there's a section for the feet, for the legs, for the head, for the ears, etc. But each of those have lots of photos. Some sections have more photos than other. For example, this is some of the photos to use for the ears. And then at the back of it, you're going to have the making up section and she's going to tell you how to put your bunny or your creature together and then she's also going to go over some of the finishing touches techniques and as you can see there's lots of photos to help you along the way with that as well. I do want to show you the individual patterns and we are going to start off with Bunty the Bunny and Bunty the Bunny is a skill level one and Bunty the Bunny utilizes one ball of the colorway Serene. I love how the colorway is broke up using color control and that just means you use certain parts of the yarn, certain colors, to do the different aspects of the animal and it gives it a really cute personality and makes them all unique. You can make yours just like this one or you can look for a ball that has more orange and make your body more orange but if you wanted to make one just like this you need to make sure when you are shopping for your cake that you get one that has a lot more pink in it so you'll have enough for the body. The next up is Biscuit the Duck, and it's also a skill level one. It utilizes a one ball in the color weight Tranquil. Again, I love how color control is used here, making the head different from the body and the feet, but all using that one cake of yarn so that you can make individual cute creations at a very cost efficient price because you're only having to buy one ball of yarn opposed to two or three colors of cakes yarns to get the multi-colored creature. This book would also be really great for stash busting because you can pull from all your leftover yarns and just focus on creating the different parts of the animals in different colors and for that I think it's a really great purchase and investment. We do have the cow next. This is Hazel who is a skill level two and she uses one cake of Zen color. The book keeps calling this balls, but these are cakes to me because a ball would be it in a kind of ball form. It's, it's kind of crazy, but I'll, if you hear me say cake, I'm calling the same thing, but the book does refer to these as balls. And I think most of us know those as a cake of yarn. Aggie the Highland Bull is next, a skill level two, and it utilizes the colorway that I have purchased, and that is the color Cool. There is another creature in this book, the kitten, that also uses the Cool, so I'm kind of deciding which one I want to make. Let me know down below which one you think I should make with my color cake Cool. Should I make the Highland Bull, or should I make the kitten? And I will show you the kitten in a minute, and I'm hoping you're sticking around to see all 15 of these colorful designs so you can be inspired as well. The next one is the lamb who is a skill level three. I think probably because the amount of bobbles that this thing has, it's just adorable. And I think the bobbles are really help give it that sheepy look. It is also using a one ball of the yarn in the color Felicity. So, so cute love the detail under the eyes and that is just using some crochet thread or what i would probably use in this case is cross stitch thread so we have the swarma the beta fish skill level three and they use one ball of happy i really love these i think this would make a really cute mobile in a kid's room they're bright they're colorful they're very fun and it can look like they're swimming in the sky Super, super cute. And here is the kitten that I spoke about earlier. Daisy is the kitten which uses the color cool for her creation and she is a skill level one. After the kitten, there is the dog Jasper. 
He is super adorable as well. He is a skill level two and he uses one cape in the colorway Harmony. Love his bent ear and if you've been with me for a little bit, you know that I lost my Yorkie this month and he had a bent ear. So that that's pretty, um, pretty sentimental to me. Next, we have the Axe Idol, who is Emily. She is a skill level two, and she uses one cake of the color pure. I love Axe Idols. I've always wanted one, but I have a feeling those are very hard to keep. Then we have Jacqui the Turtle. <laughs> love him. Skill level one, and he uses the color Mantra. Very fun little turtle. Next, we have Misha the Otter. I absolutely adore otters. I think they are just the most cute, cutest little creatures in the world. Misha is only a skill level one, and it uses the color Felicity. I will definitely be making me little Misha. Oh, it just looks adorable. Then we have Weatherly the Unicorn, who is a skill level two and uses the colorway Happy again, just like the fish. And I really love how the one colorway can create these different creatures and give them all such different personalities. Again, the important thing is if you want your make to look just like the photo, you're going to need to make sure you're looking at the cakes that you're buying. And for example, this Weatherly Unicorn, you're going to want to find one that has a lot of orange and a lot of pink because that's the main part of the body. And if you get one that has a lot of the other color, you may not have enough to create that, which I guess, again, is kind of a downfall of this book if you're trying to create the exact same creature. But I hope that you let your creativity flourish and that you don't allow yourself to be boggled down by what the creator of the designs has made versus what your creation can be. We then have Romeo the donkey, who is a skill level one and uses the color chai. Super cute. I could just imagine that donkey like having a little guitar. He just looks like he would be such a little rocker. We have Neville the alpaca, a skill level one. And this also uses one ball of the color Zen. I love the eyebrows, so cute. And last but not least, it, coming into the skill level two is my favorite Garrick the dragon who uses one ball in the color balance. I definitely need to pick up a color way of this because I would like to make him so much. He is absolutely adorable. And I love the color proportions that she used with the pink head and the green and bottom. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for one that has more of the greens than any other color. So I can get him as close as possible to that. Let me go into about the author and the index for easy reference. I do want to show you another aspect of this book that I love. On the front cover and the back cover, you have this flappy thing and they make really great bookmarks. So if you have to close up and lay your book down really fast, you can use the one on the front or the back, depending on where you are in the book to be your bookmark. And I just think that's a great added bonus to this book that the designer put in there for the crafter. And another thing I wanna talk about is the use of highlighter tape. If you have followed this channel for a while, you have probably seen me talk about highlighter tape. This is the colors that I have. You can get this sometimes at office supply stores or you may have to order it online but it is a tape that is not as sticky as traditional scotch tape so it will not damage your pages but it gives you just a little bit of a highlight so you can kind of keep up where you are if you're trying to make any pattern where you're around a bunch of people or if you're like me and you like to divulge in some netflixing while you create that way you can look down and know exactly where you are I really hope you enjoyed the review of the Yarn Cake Amigurumi 15 Cute Creations to Crochet. I honestly think it is a really great book for the price, even at the $24.99 price, just because the patterns are so cute. You are really getting a great book for the money when you think about the yarn cost going into making these. Because of the way it is written, you can use this as a great stash busting book. So you're using up those scraps and not having to buy new yarn. But if you are wanting to buy new yarn for these, you can get one ball to create each pattern. So that's going to be under $6 per creature. And the fact that this can be found anywhere. So you don't have to spend extra gas going to a yarn store 
most of us are traveling at Walmart or Joann's or Michael's at some point on our way to buy groceries each week, especially me at Walmart. So it makes this a really convenient purchase. And I think that is also plays into the value of the cost of the book. Not to mention the fact that these are going to bring you such joy when you're making if you like to crochet amigurumi, as well as when you gift this to someone, it is going to bring them just as much joy. And for that, I think it's a great buy book. Let me know what you think down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would also love to know, again, if you think I should make the Highland Cow or the Kitten with My Yarn. And I do have a video that I plan to come out this week that had the giveaway. Unfortunately, I have not been able to sit down and record my current status of my projects where I was going to give offer that giveaway up. So I hope you check that out when I get that recorded. Try my best to get it recorded this week. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. I would greatly appreciate it. I really would love to see this channel grow. And that is one of the ways that you can do it that doesn't cost you anything to help me do so. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do have more fun book reviews coming to you. I apologize in the delay of my videos. I've just had a life change kind of in the last couple of weeks. And with the care of my mother-in-law and so I'm, I'm still trying to navigate that circumstances and figure out how all this is going to work but I'm doing my best and I truly appreciate your patience. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching and spending some of your day with me and I will see you in the next one but until then you can check out this video that YouTube is going to suggest for you and you may enjoy it. Bye!